Uh, you know what would make that better? This this conversation better? If we brought in a BYU Tim basketball Lacombe, assistant coach. Tim Lacombe, our homeboy. Tim Lacombe. And what do you know? Tim Lacombe in studio. TV magic. With BYU radio. Sports Nation. Bang. Coach, welcome to the set. Um, have you had a chance to relax a little bit over the past few days? Uh, you know, you always kind of take a breath after it's all set, all, all said and done and, and kind of realize there's a world going on around you. Um, but still plenty to do. Lots going on. Um, you kind of just shift gears from game planning to kind of taking a look at how the season went and things you need to improve on and kind of start getting to work for next year. So, uh, yeah, it slowed down a little bit, but always something to do. Uh, we just had Tyler Hawes on. Big, bigger challenge, him passing Jimmer and scoring or getting a girlfriend going into the next season? Oh, yeah. I don't think uh, him getting a girlfriend it would be that hard. I think. <laughs> uh, I don't think so Especially either. if he just keeps – Speaking Tagalog, right? I mean, that's pretty impressive. That is, that is impressive. impressive. It was really for like impressive. a minute, but it was really impressive. But I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have no idea. Obviously, neither did you guys because you were talking about how he was saying like, Sports Nation is the best show on television. That was the clear translation. Right. But, man. Jerem Googled it. That's impressive stuff when a guy can go learn. And I, I can barely learn names in my own language <laughs> and, and yeah. retain them, let alone another language. BYU basketball assistant coach Tim Lacombe with us on BYU Sports Nation. Always great insight. Good to have him with us again. Coach, recapping a remarkable season, really. I mean, I look at the job that the coaching staff did, Dave Rose, the amount of challenges and peaks and valleys you guys had to go through was just, in my mind, it was very impressive that you got to the NCAA tournament. How would you sum up what happened this season? Well, it, it's, it's easy. The easiest way to talk about it is we always have three goals for the program. First one's to win our league. Obviously fell short there by a couple games. Um, had a couple of disappointing stretches within the league that kind of set us back. Uh, second goal is always to get to the tournament, and we were able to achieve that, and yeah. we're really check. excited. Yeah, we, we were able to check that box. And as bleak as things kind of looked mid-year in the league to where these guys kind of started to believe and, um, and picked up the pace and, and the energy and the focus, um, we're really excited about being able to do that and get back to the tournament. Um, and third goal is always to try to advance in that tournament. Yeah. We fell short there. We played a really good Oregon team. Um, kind of made a run there in the second half, and we all felt like, here we go. Yeah. And uh, and then they kind of answered that run, and, and we weren't able to counter that. But overall, I think if you look back, take a, a step back at the difficulty of our schedule, a lot of the different things we had to go through. Um, overall, I think to get to the tournament, uh, to play our best basketball in, in February and in, in, into March, uh, get to the championship game of the WCC tournament through a couple tough games. Uh, overall, you got to feel pretty good about uh, the fact that this team really responded to some tough things. BYU basketball assistant coach Tim Lacombe is on BYU Sports Nation. This season was so unique. Under Dave Rose, nine seasons, I thought this was the most unique season in that you played a stronger schedule than BYU had ever played under Dave Rose. You have zero seniors. You're relying on freshmen and newcomers like a Mika, Worthington, Halford, Bartley, these new guys. You had, you had half a turnover uh, of roster. Uh, and then you only have 10 available scholarship players. Uh, how did you think you did given the challenges that I just mentioned? Like I said, I think um, you look back and there's things that you always feel like, man, we could have done better, we could have done better here. But with all that taken into consideration, we feel like um, – and always, coach always seems to to make the right move, and he he he's never disappointed me in the seven years I've been here. Uh, he seems to know his roster and his guys better than anyone else. Um, there's a lot of people on the outside that say maybe he should do this, do that, but he seems to always push the right button. And no no different this year. Um, we were I think at one point in the season eight and seven, we lost our first two games in league, um, and coach kind of just. Move some things around. You know, we kind of uh, put a focus on on different guys in different spots, and everybody seemed to respond and everybody bought in. And the thing that's exciting to me about this year's team is I don't know that I've been around a group that as close as these guys were. You know, we would leave a meeting and the coaches would leave and the guys would stay and they'd be in there for an hour enjoying being around each other. So there wasn't a lot of the jealousy, the clicks. And I think ultimately that's kind of what held us all together. Tim Lacombe, BYU basketball assistant coach on BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. That closeness was obvious when you were watching the NCAA tournament selection show. Uh, I believe at Dave Rose's house. 
And uh, you, I mean, there's an embrace with with you hugging Coach Rose and the guys just going crazy. Um, for me, that was certainly a highlight of the season. It didn't even happen on the court, but it happened off the court. What was that going through? Uh, what was going through your mind during that whole experience? Well, with that being such an important thing to us, getting to the tournament uh, and and not really knowing, particularly with Kyle's injury, whether we were going to be penalized for that or yeah. how we were going to be penalized and. You know, everybody was talking about us being the last team in, so it was it was pretty tense. And there were a couple of slots that came and went that we felt like we could be in with the Thursday Saturday play. Um, so when they flashed it, I, I don't know that any of us in the room, particularly when they flashed Oregon because we'd played them before, were all quite prepared to be the team yeah. that was going to play there. And so I think it was a couple of those things where it was really tense, and we weren't expecting per se that spot, um, but the room erupted. Uh, the funny thing is we had. Uh, some people upstairs that weren't in the room that said they like they literally felt electricity, you know, come through the floor <laughs> and um, damages. It, it was it was a, it was a great experience, a great day, and, and really happy because the guys worked hard for that, and for them to be rewarded for it, and for the committee to realize the body of work and and everything we'd kind of been through. That was really a neat day. Who had the best celebration in that room? Oh man, I I never did watch the watch the replay. Of you haven't it. watched it? No, I haven't oh, seen it. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, I need to see There's it. So many, good. Need, we've watched it like twenty times we've each just to see the different guy yeah. doing individual. different stuff. Uh, you know, I just I I was the happiest for Coach. Um, he 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 has given his heart and soul to this place, and he's been through so much. And getting to that tournament and what that means for our program, I know how important that is to him. Um, that to me, coaches, I, I like I said, I haven't seen it, but to me, his his reaction probably had to have been the best. He said that he paid an unusual amount of attention uh, to bracketologists and bubble talk. Like he had never done that before, but he got, he got involved in that this year. Did you get that sense from him? Did you have those conversations? Yeah, with him? when we'd meet as a staff, you know, we, we were definitely kind of looking at all the numbers and. We felt the same way. Like we felt like we our numbers. If you just looked at raw numbers, that our numbers were as good or better than any of those people we were going against. So we didn't all want to jinx ourselves. So nobody really brought it up. But after the fact, you know, we all said, "Man, everybody's talking about this team or that team," and and we were well above them. But we all kind of felt that with the numbers and kind of looking at it. So it, it's a helpless time. That week is a long time when yeah. you lose that championship game, and then you've got to sit through all those games. And everybody's prognosticating about what has to happen. Um, so it was it was a crazy week. We were just gra- grateful to have it over and, and to be in. How is Kyle Collinsworth, and do you expect him to be ready near the beginning of the of next season? Kyle's surgery went really well. Um, he's he's as tough a competitor as I've ever been around. So I don't doubt that he'll be on track uh, to be ready for next year. Uh, with no setbacks, hopefully, wow. you know, is what we're all kind of hoping for. And that'd be best case scenario, right? Right. Six months. About. Right. And I'm I'm definitely a, a best case scenario mm-hmm. guy. I mean, I've been married for twenty something years, and <laughs> that's how I got my wife to you know to buy into that whole marriage thing. <laughs> she was your best case scenario. That's right. And, and but uh, no, I think Kyle is. I, I think he's right now. He's he's in a lot of pain. He's struggling. He's going through all the tough stuff. But like I say, I believe that he's he's as competitive and driven as any kid we've ever had. Um, we're gonna go see him, you know, here today and and have lunch with him and kind of get a, a better feel for it. But I feel really good about uh, the surgery. The doctors are real positive about it. The one thing the doctor did say is that he, he the one thing he can do all summer is shoot free throws. Which oh, be, oh be, baby! You know, which did you laugh great. when he said that? No, no. <laughs> he, he he he's like he's like most of the guys who I operate on. Yeah. I'm not don't, don't do all basketball. I do all sports, but in basketball they become better free throw shooters, and you know, I know that that's a huge goal of Kyle's. Yeah. And so hopefully that works out well for for him and for everybody. Tim Lacombe, BYU basketball assistant coach, joining BYU Sports Nation right now. Coach Tyler Haas talked a lot about team defense. We asked him what. What's the point of emphasis this offseason? He said, well, I want to work on myself becoming an, a better defender individually. And then he talked about team defense. Is that where you put priority number one? Yeah, I, I do believe that uh, overall we we probably had our, our biggest difficulty uh, night in, night out with, with guarding. And we've got to become more committed as a team to guarding. And it's it's a team thing. I mean, you can – four of the guys out there, three and a half guys out there can do their job and – and somebody lets the team down, and it all kind of comes back to, to the, the, the importance of a possession, valuing the importance of a possession. And I think 
Offensively, we, we got way better as the season went on at valuing opportunities and in, in, in when we had advantages. Um, I think that's something we do, though. We have to, every guy has to kind of look at himself in the mirror. We've got to make sure that um, it's, a, it's a, it, right from the very beginning, it's a priority uh, because you can see that you can score a lot of points in this tournament, but you can, there's, everybody's pretty talented out there, so you've got to kind of have some, some juice to your defense. Really feel like, you know, if you break everything down with how fast we play and the number of possessions we play, sometimes oh, yeah. points, per, points get a little bit skewed. Um, and percentages aren't that crazy out of whack, but it's just a stop here, another stop there. Um, I, I felt like we were pretty good on the glass this year. We just we just need to – all of us need to kind of just buy into how can we get a little bit better defensively and help us win three, four, five, six more games. Yeah, once you get a few more stops, look out. We're talking uh, We're talking Sweet 16. You know, it's a, it could be that close. Well, thank you for the time. We want you to sign this Rise Up flag if you have a minute. It might devalue it. Is that right? No, no, no absolutely no. not. Come on. Right. Come on. We right. have great signatures on here. Tim McComb, thanks for the time. We'll talk to you uh, in a couple weeks, months. I don't know. Hey, it's great being with you. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Tim. All right.